Rattle, rattle, rattle. We are live. In today's video, we're going to fully disassemble and then reassemble the pin slammer for potential service and repair. Now, before we get started, I do want to go over a couple of tips and techniques to keep you out of trouble. Please assess your experience level. If you're not mechanically inclined or you're a beginner at tearing apart reels, I recommend you do not start with this one. It is a expensive reel and as such, it is vastly more complicated than a more reasonably priced simplistic reel such as the Pin Fierce 3. I strongly suggest using a stowaway tackle box to sort parts by their component groups. And I also recommend using a walled tray to catch any parts that may fly off the reel during uh, breakdown and assembly. If you come across an assembly that looks complicated, take your phone and take a picture of that assembly so when you go back to reassemble it, you know what you're looking at and you know how to do it properly. The manufacturer used uh, blue Loctite and if you're not using the proper tools, you could easily strip uh, screws when you first disassemble this reel. All right, a quick note on what uh, supplies I used. I used two separate uh, micro screwdriver sets and then a 15 millimeter uh, socket with a driver. Also, I used paper towels, oil, and grease. And that's pretty much all my supplies. So without uh, any more jabbering, let's just get right into it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is unscrew the drag knob assembly. And that has a seal and we're gonna go stow that. Now we're looking at the drag cover and it's three screws. We're gonna pop those three screws out. And then there we have our drag cover with its seal and the two washers. One's metal and that's keyed and the other is a composite material the dura drag material. All right, now looking at the bottom side of the spool, we're gonna remove the um, line hook retaining spring. So unscrew that little screw, pull that out. Now we're gonna take a micro flathead and we're gonna pull that uh, retaining spring or clip out. So a little retainer pops out and we can go stow that. That's what it looks like up close. Now we got our line hook, line clip, whatever you want to call it, that just pops right on out. And it has a little uh, hole in it, so just something to note. Now we can take the line clicker out. The line clicker has a little washer underneath, so be careful not to lose that. And then there's a little spring, don't damage it, and you can remove the uh, retaining screw for that uh, line clicker spring. So I like to store all the uh, components together. All right, now that all that's left uh, to remove are the drag cover screws. Uh, they have little synthetic washers on them, so be sure to not lose those. And that those screws retain the drag drive plate, and that pops out, and that has the seal around it as well. So make sure you don't damage that seal, and I just keep it on there. Clean it if you need to. And now we're looking at our drag washers. There's three total. One's, uh, they got two drag friction washers, and then a metal uh, keyed drag washer. All right, next we're gonna get a good grip on the rotor so it can't spin. And then we're gonna take our opposing hand and spin the entire handle assembly clockwise and it'll just unscrew them back right on out based on that orientation. Then we can flip the reel over and uh, unscrew the handle cap assembly with a seal. So that seal will just stay in there. No real need to pull that out. All right, next up we're gonna back out the line roller screw and that exposes the whole line roller assembly, which consists of a line roller collar, the ball bearing, the line roller itself, which is that brass color, and then the schematic calls uh, this little white bushing a bearing, but that's BS, it's just a bushing. And I'll show you guys how to assemble that on the back end. Now the bail holder is real easy, just back the screw out and it'll come right off. All right, next we're gonna back out our bail arm screw. That's gonna free up the bail arm. It'll just pop right on off. And then that will expose the pivot arm and its respective spring. Go ahead and stow the bail arm and its screw together and that'll help you out on the back end. So there's our pivot arm with spring and that just pulls right on out. Keep those two components together as well and stow them. Next we can take our rotor cap screw off. That rotor cap pops off. Stow those together. And then boom, our rotor trip lever just pops on out. Cool, so the bail uh, mechanics are much gutted there. All right, not necessary for cleaning, but I'm gonna show you how to remove the click gear with synthetic and metal washers. There's the metal washer on the bottom, and then there's gonna be synthetic washers on top. And then you just put your two fingers underneath it and just pull the whole uh, mechanism out. So you have your synthetic washers on top, and then you have the little metal washer that hangs out on the bottom. Uh, the oil tends to keep them all together, so just stow those uh, in one place. Clean them if you need to. 
All right, time for the fun part. We're gonna back out the body cover assembly screws and the body cover assembly pops uh, off. It may take a little uh, working to get it come off initially. And then uh, just be careful, there's a delicate body seal um, in between the cover assembly and the body itself. And there's the seal. And that's what makes the pin slammer so great. At the bottom of the gear housing, there's a tiny little screw located on the oscillation slider, or what should be called a crosswind block. That comes right on out. I do believe there's a little bit of Loctite on it, so it might be tough. Do not strip it. And then that frees up the main shaft. So that little screw allows you to pull the main shaft out. Now our main drive gear, which is beautifully CNC machined, will just come on out. That has a few washers on it, so don't let those fall off. Now our crosswind block will come on out. It has a guide shaft, so that may fall out as well. Now what we have left is our oscillation gear or our crosswind gear. That big fat screw will come on out. I believe that has Loctite as well. And then the um, best thing to do is just flip the body over, give it a little inertia, and that little uh, gear will pop on out. Boom, so there, all your main drive gears are now removed. On the back side of that oscillation gear, there's a little bushing, don't damage it. All right, probably unnecessary, but you can also remove the slider retainer plate, which just kind of helps guide your crosswind block up and down, so you can remove that if you like and clean behind it. Alrighty. Next, we can attack the rotor nut locking plate. If you want to maintain factory uh, presets, you can take a picture of this assembly before you start digging into it. You can also mark up the rotor nut and uh, memorize its orientation as well. I didn't do that. So what you're looking at there is the rotor main shaft seal with inverted walls. Those inverted walls, when it's flipped over, fit into the channels that are cut into that rotor nut, as you can see there. All right, take a 15 millimeter socket and back out that rotor nut. It shouldn't be too tight. And then there we have our pinion gear seal that is now exposed. That pops on off, don't lose it. And there's a little bushing. It's called a pinion gear bushing. Do not lose that. That's probably like one of the easiest components to lose. Um, there it is, that's where it lives. So when I first disassembled this reel, that was stuck to the rotor nut. With the rotor nut removed, the rotor now will come off the body. Underneath is a rotor brake component with spring. Make sure those don't uh, go missing. So I just put it right back where I found it and I'll go store the rotor uh, facing up. Now we can remove the rotor brake and ball bearing retainer and it has three separate schools or screws. Just back those out. Now we're looking at the body head seal that pops off and there's a little wall around the uh, ball bearing retaining plate and that's where that seal fits. So now we can pull the entire pinion gear assembly out. So there's that pinion gear bushing once again, make sure we don't lose that. Now we have the ball bearing retainer comes out. There's two washers. Mine came with two washers. I think the schematic only showed one whatever we'll see how many you guys have and then there's the sealed ball bearing next we got the roller clutch and its respective sleeve that's the plus one bearing you always see uh, when these manufacturers advertise uh, ball bearings they'll go like six plus one well that's the plus one right there and then there's a second ball bearing a smaller one and then that has a washer uh, on the left side underneath it as well. And that's actually keyed. So if you notice the unique symmetry on that washer. All right, each side of the body has these uh, body side screws. On my reel, they were extremely tight and I wasn't able to back them out with the screwdriver that I had. Um, I wasn't willing to strip those screws. So I just left the bearings in place, but just be advised it may take a little extra oomph to actually get those backed out. All right, now the reel is completely stripped down for cleaning. My general rule for cleaning is I like to grease all the gears and any rubber components, and I like to apply oil to bearings, any areas that uh, have threading, so any screw holes, and any external moving surfaces. So at this point, we're gonna assume that the reel is now completely stripped, it is completely clean, and now we have to reassemble it. 
So from top to bottom, we have the pinion gear, we have the keyed washer, small ball bearing, roller clutch sleeve, roller clutch, bearing collar, larger ball bearing, and then two uh, space seam washers. So we're gonna put that keyed washer on the bottom of the small bearing, turn it until it uh, fits nicely. And we're gonna put our small bearing on top. And then that pinion gear on the bottom away from the threads is actually shelved, so it'll hold everything. Now we're gonna take our roller clutch with its sleeve and put it on top of the bearing. Note that the white portion will be facing uh, away from the threads and the metal portion will be facing the threads. Now we have our bearing collar and the bearing face will point up towards the thread. And then we have our two uh, spacing watchers. Or, and now we have our two washers and it should spin in one direction. All right, now we're gonna twist in the pinning gear assembly into the housing and it should just pop right on in. Real simple. Now we're gonna grease up our uh, body retaining plate with grease and then our body head seal will fit on it nicely and stick to it. There's a little wall that the seal uh, goes around. Now we're gonna grease up our uh, ball bearing inside its collar. That'll kind of help keep the seal. I like to put a little uh, oil on the pinion gear itself where it meets the ball bearing. There's an up close of the body uh, head seal all lubed up. And we're gonna put the rotor brake and the retainer plate down and we're gonna line up the holes. Now we're gonna tighten up all of the rotor brake screws. Rotor brake slash retaining plate uh, screws. Tighten it up, don't need to strip it out. And let's not forget, we're gonna put our pinion gear bushing back in place. Now we take our rotor Make sure those rotor brake components don't fall out. And we're just gonna turn a rotor until it aligns with the key to grooves of the pinion gear. So here it took me quite a while, <laughs> but eventually they will mate correctly and pop on. All right, with the bushing installed, we can now put our pinion gear seal on. I'll make sure that's clean, nice and lubed up. And this reel is great about providing channeling and grooves for all the seals, so it's very intuitive. And then there's our rotor nut, threads facing down, so smooth face down. And we're just gonna hand tighten it. Then we're gonna grab our 15 millimeter socket and just make it a little snug. And this is where if you had made a marking on your rotor nut and your rotor, you could just return it to factory torque settings, but I just do it till it's tight. And then there's our main shaft seal. The walls are gonna face down and they're gonna fit right into the channeling on the rotor nut and make sure that's all greased up. Then we have our rotor nut locking plate. Right there, I got lucky, it lined up very nicely with the locking plate. So now I'm gonna put those locking plate screws in and we're gonna tighten those down, no big deal. I like to oil up any of the screws in the threaded areas and down in the shaft area. All right, now we're looking at our cross wind gear with its bushing on the back. We're gonna push in that screw and then we're gonna put it right into the body there. You can see that blue Loctite on it. So we'll tighten that down, no big deal. And now our oscillation gear or our uh, cross wind gear is ready to rock and roll. All right, there's our slider retainer plate that just goes right on in. Now here's the crosswind block. We want to align the channeling in the crosswind block with the cam on the crosswind gear. And then you can put in that guide shaft uh, right into its respective wells. And there's a little lip on the right side of that crosswind block that fits underneath the retainer plate. And that's what it looks like. And then our main drive gear can go right on in. And we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now with the main drive gear in, we can grab our uh, main shaft and that main shaft is keyed. So you gotta twist it flat, flat edges towards the outside of the body and just kind of turn it until it slides right into the crosswind block. Then we take that crosswind screw and just tighten it up. 
And that might take a little finesse to uh, get that little bad boy in there. What I found was a good technique was I always put the screw on the, the Phillips or the flathead first and then kind of like bring the reel over the top onto the screw and that seemed to work out pretty nice. So we're just going to tighten up that uh, crosswind screw and uh, pretty much secures all of the internals, the, uh, the main gear assembly. And then you can spin your rotor head and that just kind of makes sure everything's working uh, properly. I have assembled reels in the past where everything was very stiff and uh, definitely is a telltale that you assembled something incorrectly, but here, no issues, it's working great. If you do end up taking the click gear off, this is how you would reassemble it. Basically, you take the little metal washer, push it down, it'll go until it hits a little ledge and then it stops. And then you take your click gear, the rounded portion facing up, and then you have all your little synthetic washers on top. And that kind of creates friction to keep it from uh, popping off. Next, we're gonna put on the main body seal. And a good technique is to really grease up the channeling for that body seal. When I first took this reel apart, I had issues uh, putting that body seal back in because I didn't put any grease in it. So like it was just kind of warping and just didn't want to set. And I didn't want to put that uh, body cover assembly back on it and pinch and compromise the seal. So as you can see here with like a copious amount of grease, that uh, body seal will just kind of lock in place. It'll just kind of stick in like glue. And there's a little uh, notch on the right hand side of the body seal that fits into a metal uh, channel or groove. It's like a keyed uh, portion of the seal. So make sure that's lined up. And then look, you just kind of push the seal in and it just kind of sticks where it needs to because it's a very unique uh, form. So if you don't have any uh, stickiness, it'll just do whatever it wants and it won't behave. So that's a technique. And the seals, when they're all greased up nice and liberally, uh, I, I feel like that helps keep them watertight. So now the body cover assembly will just fit on nice and seamless. Then you got the... Uh, body cover assembly screws that just go right on in. So we'll just tighten up all those uh, screws. So now our body cover is now uh, back in place. All right, next take your rotor trip lever. The longer side goes on the bottom and it just kind of slides right in like that. And I like to push it up towards the top of that uh, bail arm area. And then we have a rotor cap or cover and the rotor cover screw will just go right on in more of a cosmetic uh, feature there. We're gonna push up our trip lever, get it out of the way, and then there's our bail arm spring with the pivot arm installed. Um, and now we're gonna insert the bail arm. Boom, it just pops on, and I'm gonna look uh, at it a little closer. Once you get it on, make sure you check the functionality and it clicks. So here's a close-up of what's going on. You got a little circle represented by one and then a channel represented by two on top. Um, the circle goes on the bottom to the pivot arm, the channel goes on top to the trip lever, and that little uh, wall will split Y and Z. So there is an intermediate position, and then it just pops right on on, and then kind of turn it back and forth, make sure it's clicking to confirm functionality. Then we screw in our bail arm screw. Bail arm is going back and forth, it's clicking. If this doesn't sound right, redo it. So now we put our line roller assembly back together. Uh, we can insert that white bushing into the line roller and we take our small ball bearing on the opposite side. It goes right into the line roller and then uh, bushing facing the bale and it just slides on. And then we'll get our line roller collar. That's the orientation. So small side facing and the flat portion goes towards the bale arm. There's your bale arm screw or your line roller screw rather. Just tie down that line roller screw. Don't get too wild on it. And now your bale uh, will kind of pivot around the line roller. And now we're gonna grab our uh, bale holder, twist it 90 degrees out, it'll pop on the wire, twist it back like 90 degrees and it'll lock in. And then our um, bale holder screw, we can just send that home. Boom, and then our bale system's pretty much done. Spin that line roller, make sure it's uh, free spooling. 
uh, night. We don't want any friction on that. Um, that's a nice feature of the pin slammer. Boom, so now there is our bale assembly. All right, looking at the bottom of the spool, we're gonna insert our drag washers, metal facing down, and they have uh, four keys around the washers and they fit into little channels built into the spool, which is nice. So that carbon material is facing up. Then we're gonna put our metal keyed washer in and then our final drag washer. This is double-sided synthetic. The first washer was single-sided synthetic. All right, with the drag washers installed, we can put in our drag drive plate. Notice how it is keyed as well, and it has a seal. So that keyed portion will fit into the keyed washer. So you kind of want to estimate the alignment like that and push it down. You might have to twist it a little bit to get it to uh, seat properly and go down uh, nice and smooth. If it feels odd, redo it. All right, there's our, we'll call them uh, the drag plate screws. And we'll just tighten those down and they have a little synthetic washer on them so make sure they still have those now we can put in our line holder or line hook see how it's kind of faced with the hole up that's going to help us put in our retaining clip so just slide in the retaining clip into that hole notice the orientation of the retaining clip notice how like the bend and the circle part is facing out and then that just kind of folds over and then we just put in our clip screw right there no big deal and that's what it looks like next we got our uh, spool clicker that's a little a uh, little metal spacer washer on the bottom so make sure that didn't disappear and we're gonna screw in our line clicker now to note the drag retainer plate or the drag, uh, what's it called? The drag drive plate. Those three screws are symmetrically displaced from one another. The asymmetric holes are for the line clip and the uh, clicker system. So now we have our uh, clicker spring. We'll just tighten that down. We'll take a little micro flathead. We'll loop it into that uh, spring and I want the mouth of that spring facing towards the spool. And what that does is that just like hooks the lip of that line or that clicker hole, and then you just push it down. And then that kind of seats the uh, spring into the line clicker. And that is how you build the bottom of the spool and kind of test the functionality of the line clicker. Now looking at the top of the spool, we're gonna throw in our composite drag washer, then we have a keyed metal washer, and then we have our drag cover plate, and it has a seal as well. Part of the IPX6 system of the slammer. Turn that seal until the hole is aligned, and then align the holes on top of the spool. Right here I use a little micro flathead to help uh, facilitate that seal to slide over and align properly. All right, it's all greased up. We're gonna line the holes. And now we're just going to screw down um, the drag cover screws. Like I said earlier, I like to put oil in all the threaded regions. That ensures that none of my screws will develop rust. More blue Loctite on those bad boys. We'll fast forward through, clean it up. And now we take our drag knob assembly uh, with its seal. Freshen up that seal. It's plenty lubed up. Put a little grease on that bad boy, smear it around, and our drag knob assembly is good to go. And now we can um, spin the spool on the main shaft until that key drag washer lines up properly. So fast forward, eventually it's going to drop down. There it goes, drops down onto the main shaft, and then the main shaft threads are exposed. And now we can send home the uh, drag knob assembly. Now what's wild about the pin slammer is the handle knob itself has its own bearing. So take a large flathead and back out the handle knob cap and it itself has a seal as well, which is remarkable. And then there's a little blue sealed ball bearing. So throw some oil on that, maybe grease up uh, the seals. I like to grease up all the seals. Help ensure waterproof. And it kind of keeps those uh, those seals moisturize and they don't dry out and crack. 
20 years from now. And then nice and easy, that uh, knob cap just screws right back on. Take your little flathead, just tighten it down. Don't get buck wild on it. And then now your handle assembly is all lubed up, ready to rock and roll. There you go, wipe the grease off. All right, there's the uh, handle assembly cap on the right side. Then on the left side, I'm going to hold the rotor. I'm going to grease up all the external moving parts where the handle knob meets the handle. And we're going to screw counterclockwise until it tightens up. Don't reef down on it just until it gets snug. When you're reeling fish in and lures while you're fishing, it'll just stay naturally tight. So now the reel is completely built. We're gonna check functionality. So I checked uh, the spool, it turns. Now I'm checking the drag system at different levels. Everything feels right. And it should be ready to rock and roll. So turning the spool, everything seems to work. All right, as always, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I hope this video was helpful. And make sure you get out and go fishing. All right, we'll see you later, bye.